Understanding black holes is ultimately related to understanding the laws of gravity at the fundamental level. Newton taught us that every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force of gravity which depends on the mass and the distance between them. The more massive are the objects, the stronger the force of gravity between them will be. This theory explains why objects fall, the moon orbits around Earth, and even took us to space. It was around the 17th century and Newton was puzzled by these two questions about moon's orbit. Number 1. Why doesn't the moon come crashing out of the sky and onto Earth due to the gravity of Earth? And number 2. Why does the moon move in a circle rather than a straight line even though it is acted by Earth's gravity? It took Newton more than 20 years to figure this out and of course he had to invent calculus along the way. But with the benefit of his genius thought experiment, we can understand it in a little less than 20 years. His thought experiment is called Newton's Cannonball and was published in A Treatise of the System of the World in 1728. You can think of a thought experiment as a mental exercise that you can use to explore a hypothetical scenario. And since it is all in your mind, you don't have to go through the trouble of carrying it out in the real world. However, you can still learn a lot from these kinds of experiments. Now, let's go through Newton's cannonball thought experiment and how it can be related to black holes. For this thought experiment, imagine you are on top of a very high mountain with a hypothetical cannon that is so large and powerful that it could shoot a cannonball with enough force to escape the Earth's gravity pull and travel to the moon. If there were no force of gravitation and air resistance, when we shoot a cannonball with some velocity, it would continue to travel in a straight line until it reaches the moon. However, because Earth has a gravitational pull, the cannonball would follow a curved path and fall back down to the Earth. If you pick the right velocity for the cannonball, known as orbital speed, the trajectory of the cannonball would curve at exactly the same rate the Earth curves, and therefore the cannonball would always stay the same height above the ground. It would go on circling around the Earth along a fixed circular orbit just like the Moon. With this, Newton was able to explain the orbit of the Moon with his theory of gravity. The fact that the cannonball is constantly accelerating sounds like a strange statement. But remember, acceleration is the change in velocity, which is both the speed and direction of an object. In this case, the cannonball's direction is changing and therefore it experiences acceleration even though its speed doesn't change. If the speed is higher than the orbital velocity but not high enough to leave Earth altogether, it will continue revolving around Earth along an elliptical orbit. Finally, if the speed is very high, it will leave Earth in a parabolic or hyperbolic trajectory. This threshold speed is called escape velocity. So, what exactly is the escape velocity from the surface of the Earth? It is a whopping 11.2 kilometers per second. That's more than 40,000 kilometers per hour. You could travel from the North Pole to the South Pole in about 21 minutes at that speed. Escape velocity depends on a number of factors, and one can compute it using the equation. The m in the equation represents the mass of the planet. Planets with more mass are harder to escape than planets with less mass. The r in the equation represents the radius, which is the distance between the center of the planet and the object that is trying to escape. Now, finally, let's discuss black holes too. Black holes are weird objects. They can be incredibly small, yet have masses that are many times greater than that of the Sun. And we just learned that escape velocity depends on the planet's mass, so the escape velocity of black holes must be huge. For this, let's go through our own thought experiment. Imagine a planet more massive than our Earth. For that planet, escape velocity would certainly be higher than that of the Earth. If we keep increasing the mass while keeping its radius fixed, the escape velocity increases. When the escape velocity of an object equals the speed of light, the object necessarily becomes a black hole, meaning that it has a gravitational force so strong that not even light can escape from it. 
Black holes are therefore objects with a very high mass and a very small size, which results in a very high escape velocity. Using our formula for escape velocity, we can even compute what should be the size of the planet for it to become a black hole. All you have to do is insert the value of the speed of light on this equation and express the radius in terms of the mass of the planet. The radius you obtain is called the event horizon of a black hole. And if the mass of the planet is concentrated within this, it turns into a black hole. For a planet of the mass Earth, it has to be the size of a 9mm ball to become a black hole. While this is all nice, we have to be a bit careful using Newtonian mechanics for understanding black holes. In order to understand black holes completely, we need Einstein's theory of general relativity. In fact, according to Einstein, nothing can move faster than light. Therefore, it is not only light, but nothing can escape out of black holes.